Hi, I am Andy Cocktail Dress from Cult Culture, and welcome to another in our series of short instructional videos for co ops, community businesses, and their development workers. In this series of videos, we're looking at creating uh, financial projections or how you would create financial projections. Um, and this particular sub series, we're looking at organizing our work. How, how do we make our, um, our how do we make our lives easier when we're creating detailed financial projections? This particular video, we're going to be looking at uh, negative numbers and the perils of um, using plus or minuses, um, uh, op plus or minus operators uh, in your functions um, in your spreadsheet program. We will be using, as always in this series, Libra Calc. Um, but the the, the same uh, issues are true, whether you're using um, Excel, Google Sheets, uh, iNumbers. Yeah. So we're going to be looking at negative numbers and how best to use negative numbers in creating your detailed financial projections. So most errors. Um, I'm just going to move my picture. There we go. Um, most errors. Uh, that, that happen when you're making financial forecasts um, come from using the wrong operator, either using a, a minus when you're meant to be uh, uh, adding or using an, a, a plus when you're meant to be subtracting. Um, so when you're combining numbers, if you use the wrong operator, then obviously at the end, your balance sheet won't balance. So when we're trying to make a set of financial forecasts, which have the three financial forecasts, Profit and loss, stroke sofa if you're a charity, cash flow, balance sheet. We obviously need the th all of them to um, to work together and for the balance sheet to then balance. Um, and uh, most of the time, when I, um, you know, one of the things I I, I get uh, is people send me spreadsheets saying my balance sheet doesn't balance. Can you work out why? Um, it's usually an error that has come from the. Um, the combining of different numbers from different parts of the, the spreadsheet and using the wrong operator. So to avoid that happening, I would recommend that actually you do not use, uh, uh, you, you don't subtract, yeah? You sum everything. So everything is an addition. However, to make that work, you'll need to edit, edit um, you'll need to enter some of the numbers as negative numbers. And then obviously if you add a negative number, um, then it will be um, it, it will be a subtraction. So this means that when you're doing the, the entering, you have to decide whether or not it is a, a negative number or a positive number. But when you're totaling or subtotaling or any form of combining, you just do use the sum function or plus function. Um, and the way that you decide whether or not something should be entered as a negative number is if it's an expense, a liability, or cash leaving the organization, you enter it as a negative number. Now, when you're doing this, um, some of these are obvious. So um, the expenses are, are, are really obvious. It's like, yes, this is cost of sales. Yes, this is overheads. Yes, this is uh, share interest out. Whatever. They're really straightforward. And you know that um, that they are uh, going to be entered as a negative number. And the same with liabilities. It's really obvious when you're at the balance sheet um, and you did the balance sheet. Is this something that I own? Or is this something I owe? If I owe it, if it's a loan or money to be paid to uh, trade creditors, then it's it's a liability and you make that a negative number. And even with cash flows, most of the time it is quite obvious. Um, so, you know, uh, if you're looking at uh, purchasing property, plant or equipment, well, you know that's cash leave in the building, yeah? If you are looking at um, paying back loans or paying back financing, that's really obvious as well. But it's it's the movements in the in the in the operating cash that people often find com confusing. Um, so when you're looking at creating your operating cash flow, 
Um, and the way to make this easier for you is to define whether something is a positive or negative movement in the heading for that category. Yeah. So you say it's an increase if it's uh, or slash decrease without the without the um, parentheses. Uh, and if you put the parentheses in, that means you're going to uh, say it's cash out of the building. Um, and if you don't have parentheses, then it's cash into the organization. Yeah. So let's look at some examples because otherwise it just becomes a bit too abstract. So if we look at an example, that will make our lives easier. Uh, so we're going to look at this spreadsheet. Um, and start with the PL. So um, as you can see, everything, all my totals are summed. Yeah, whether it's a negative or a positive, it's all summed. Yeah, uh, all the way down here, summing, summing, there's no subtractions going on. Um, but th some of these things are entered as positive numbers and some of these things are entered as negative numbers. So income, because that's um, that's money coming into the organization is entered as a positive number. And then cost of sales, we know that's an expense, so it's entered as a negative number. Yeah. Same with our overheads. We know that that's an expense. We know that that's a negative number. And these were the e sort of relatively easy ones. And if we go to the balance sheet, the same is true. We're starting automatically with our assets, which are things that we own. So therefore, they're all entered as positive numbers. And then we're going to list our liabilities, which are things that we owe. So both our current liabilities and our long-term liabilities. And these are all entered as um, a negative number. Um, if you see a positive number uh, in one of the liabilities, is actually because... Um, because something that's normally a liability is in this particular instance an asset. So VAT owed is, is an asset because whilst you normally owe the VAT person money, in this instance, there is a, a VAT reclamation from the, um, the capital work and the large capital expenditure that happens at the start of the organization. So you're gonna get reclaimed some of the VAT back. Um, so th then we'll go on to the cash flow. Now, this is where it can be complicated. Um, so again, we'll just go to the easy stuff to start with. So the investing cash flows, which are the sort of purchase property plants and equipment or sale of property plants and equipment. You know, when you're buying things, um, that's money, that's cash leaving the organization. So that goes in as a negative number. You know, um, in your financing, that when you're receiving a loan or raising share capital, that's money entering the organization. So that's a positive number. And when you're repaying uh, your capital or repaying your shares, that's money leaving the organization. So that's a negative number. So that is again, now here we have some negative numbers. The bit where it's more complicated is the operating cash flows. Um, so what I have done here is I've made it really obvious that um, anything here, well, I have to think about it. I think about it once when I'm putting these things in and then I don't have to think about it each time I'm doing it because I look across and I go, oh, I'm adding this back in. This is a positive because there's no um, there's no sign that it's a negative function like the brackets. That's usually how you sign it's negative, yeah? Um, here, I'm saying that this is all going to be um, subtraction. So, you know, uh, it's going to have to be entered as negative numbers. That's why I put these parentheses in here. Sometimes uh, it can be either. So changes in stock, uh, changes in ac accounts receivable, changes in accounts payable, um, these kind of things could can go either way. So your stock levels could go up or down. If your stock levels uh, increased, 
then actually you know that the, there'll be money leaving the building because you've got the organization because you've had to spend it on buying more stock. So an increase in stock is actually a negative cash. So you so you don't have to remember that each time. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to is to is to put it in the heading. So you just look across which one am I doing? Which way round is this formula going? Yeah. Um, increases in accounts receivable. Um, so if um, if my accounts receivable, which is the money that people owed me, increases, then I have received less cash. So increases in accounts receivable is a negative cash. That's a negative effect on my cash. Yeah. Conversely, um, increases in accounts payable. Accounts payable are, is is money that I owe my in my trade creditors. If I owe more money to my trade creditors, it means I haven't spent the cash yet. So my cash position is better. So my increase in accounts payable won't have the parentheses and won't be a negative number, whereas the decrease will be. Yeah. So this is how I go about um, laying out my spreadsheets in such a way that uh, my financial forecast in such a way that I never have to think when I'm combining numbers whether they should be a, I should be adding or subtracting or whether I should be adding this one and subtracting that one some everything at the point of putting the data into the financial forecast is this a positive number is this a negative number if it's an expense a liability or money out of the organization cash out of the organization it goes in as a negative number most of the time that's obvious. The only time when it isn't so obvious is um, is, is in changes in your operating cash flow. Um, and to be able to work that out, instead of having to do it each time, uh, I think about it once, I put that in the headings, and I tell myself that here, an increase in stock will be a negative number, whereas here, a decrease in accounts payable will be a negative number. So that was this uh, video on um, using negative numbers in uh, financial forecasts, why you do it, um, and um, how, uh, how to make your life easier when you are doing it and how to avoid bringing in errors. Um, I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informative. If you liked the video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want to be notified when we upload more uh, short instructional videos for co-ops, community businesses and their development workers, please hit the notification bell now. Thanks everyone for watching.